Okay, question asks, uh, simple Rankine cycle operates between steam entering a turbine at 1200 degrees and 700 PSIA and entering a pump at two PSIA. What is the cycle's maximum efficiency? I struggle breaking it down to understand how to attack the table and get the values I'm looking for. Okay, um, I'm not gonna do this problem out fully. Uh, I want to challenge and invite uh, the person who asked this question to um, kind of double down on attacking the table. And the, and the reason for that is it's so important to be able to find the information you need in the reference handbook quickly and reliably. And you have to be patient with yourself at first. So if you're at the beginning of your study process and um, you haven't kind of gone through the pain of figuring out how to find these things, then uh, unfortunately you got to do that. If I spoon feed that to you, uh, I'm doing you a disservice. So what I will do is we can step through the assumptions and steps of the process from a high level. And then that'll give you enough breadcrumbs to go into the tables, get the values you need and do the actual, you know, algebra along the way to get to the answer. So the first thing you want to do is just search rank and cycle in the reference handbook. And when you do that, you'll get this information, which is really helpful. We have kind of a schematic view of a rank and cycle. It's easy to forget what these cycles are if you don't use them all the time. So you get that, you know, reminder straight away. And then we have um, a drawing of the rank and cycle on a temperature and entropy uh, curve. So that's good too. So now we know what processes are constant pressure, what processes are assumed to be constant entropy. And then we have the formula for the efficiency of a rank and cycle. So beginning with the end in mind, that's what we're ultimately gonna be using at the end of this problem. So what do we know initially? Initially, we know the pressure and temperature at state three. So state three is fully defined. We know the pressure and we know the temperature. So from those two things, we can find the enthalpy and the entropy. Now, I don't wanna leave you hanging because your question here was, I don't know how to use the tables. Well, if we know the pressure and the temperature, let's jump back to the previous slide. We've got 1200 F and 700 PSIA. Can anybody tell me uh, where I'm gonna find information about that state? What table should probably I Probably the superheat. It's probably superheat. So how did you know that? Just because it's uh, getting to the turbines, typically it's uh, superheated and also like the high pressure. Yeah, agree. Now, so you have you have some experience solving these problems. You kind of understand the fundamentals of a steam turbine. So right away, your your gut instinct said it's probably superheated. What if you weren't so sure? And then we'd go to so I would go to the superheated table, and then I would see what the saturated temperature is at that certain pressure. And if it's below, then it would be a steam. So there's an X value quality that I'll have that I'll need to find out. If it's not then it would be superheated and I can just use the, um, the S value um, that's in the superheated steam table. Exactly. Yeah, so if you don't know, guess and go look in the superheated table and if it's not there, then it's saturated and vice versa. If you start in the saturated table and it's, it's you know, saturation temperature is hotter at that pressure, then you go into the steam table and you'll find it there. So it turns out that this is superheated. So go ahead. So at, at 700 PSI, that saturated temperature is 503. And I think it was like 1200 in the question. Yeah. Was it 1200? Yeah. Yeah. So it's way hotter. So yeah, it would be superheated. Yep. So we're going to stay in the superheated table and we're going to pull out the entropy at state three and the enthalpy at state three. Now let's, let's actually start from the bottom here. So we're kind of working backwards. The formula we're going to end up using for the efficiency of the cycle just kind of rewriting what's given in the reference handbook here. So we can keep score as we go, as we're finding things, since we're not actually gonna pull values. I wanna make it clear what we've done and when we've done it. So we just found H3. Now the next thing we wanna know is H4. And if we wanna know the maximum efficiency of the, the cycle, we can take the liberty of assuming that the turbine is as efficient as possible, which is to say that it has 100% isentropic efficiency, which is to say that the entropy at state four is equal 
to the entropy at state three. Well, why is that useful? Well, we can go into the uh, saturated steam table now and look up SF and SFG at that pressure. At what pressure? Well, we've gone through the turbine now, so we've expanded, so the pressure is reduced. And then the question is reduced to what? Well, the other piece of information we were given is the pressure at state one, but we can infer from this chart that the um, condensing process happens at constant pressure. So the pressure at state four is the same as the pressure at state one. So we know the pressure at state four and we know the entropy at state four. And now we can look up in the saturated steam table, the values for SF and SFG, and we can find the quality at state four is gonna be S4 minus SF over SFG. Once we know the quality at state four, we can use the very same line in the table to find HF and HFG and apply that quality that was determined using the entropies to find the enthalpy at state four. HF plus quality at four times HFG. And all of these values, these four values are being looked up at P4. Uh, so P1, they're the same, right? But uh, looked up at that pressure. That's a key insight. So now we've got H4. And this is H3 as well, so that's known. Now the next assumption that we can make is that the enthalpy added in the process of pumping is negligible. And we can kind of see here that it's very small. It's not actually zero, but for most purposes, when it comes to these Rankine cycle problems, we can say that those enthalpies are about equal and we can just neglect the pumping energy. I've, I've never gotten a problem wrong as a result of making this assumption. So that, that saves you time. I don't, even, I don't even know if we have enough information to calculate um, what that change in enthalpy would be. So now we're analyzing uh, state uh, state two and saying that H2 minus H1 is approximately zero, which makes this whole term go away, but we still need the value at H2. But since this is true, we can say H2 equals H1 and H1 is easy to find because we know the pressure at one and we know that it's um, a saturated liquid with a quality of zero because it's on the left side of the saturation curve. So we can say H1 equals HF at P1. And that's coming out of the saturated uh, table as well. So now we know H, uh, H1 and H2. That's everything we need to find the uh, efficiency of the cycle. And that's assumed to be the maximum theoretical possible efficiency of the cycle because the turbine was assumed to be isentropic, 100% uh, isentropic efficiency. So hopefully that helps kind of roadmap the problem. And uh, I'd be interested to uh, get some feedback from the engineer who asked this question and hear how it went kind of putting this into practice and looking up the values and, and doing the math behind it. Thank you for this problem. Like it's really, really good. And also are these kind of problem very important? Like are they, they, are add... they important? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, it's fair game, right? It's on the, it's on the exam spec. So um, I think they could ask you about this. It's in the reference handbook. It's on the exam spec. So ranking cycle and turbine problems, are they related? Yeah, you could get a problem that's like zooms in on the turbine and asks you a question that's just about kind of like narrow framing myopically on the turbine itself. Um, but I think this question is about the Rankine cycle more generally. So you're kind of zooming out one level and a common mistake that, that engineers make is um, misunderstanding the efficiency of the turbine, which is the isentropic efficiency with the efficiency of the Rankine cycle in its entirety. And if you, if you don't have that distinction already kind of set up in your mind, then there's almost no chance you'll kind of navigate your way through the solution.